Well, today I'd like to look at what we call the second coming of Jesus, or the parousia. And it's connected with the ascension that we celebrate today, because as Jesus ascended into heaven and the apostles looked on, there were two men dressed in white, and we assume that they are angels that told the apostles, just as Jesus has left, so he will come again. And so we have this belief as Christians that Jesus will come again. As there was a creation of the world and a creation of time, so will, there will be a, a culmination of that, a completion of that in the second coming of Christ. And it's really important that we think about this because as Christians, we not only look backwards to the teachings of Christ and to his life, we not only look upwards, so to speak, to the, to the heavens, we also look forwards to what is to come. And we should do so very, very often. So what do we know about the second coming of Christ? Well, one thing we know for certain is that no one knows the time of his return. And anyone that claims that they do is clearly wrong. And there have been lots of people that have said, or groups that have said, this is when Jesus will return, and they've all been wrong, and yet somehow they still have credibility. But if there are people out there, and there's a lot of them today, that are trying to claim, this is when it's going to happen, well, shame on them, because that's not true. And if we believe people like that, shame on us, because we have the word of Christ, that he said, no one knows the day or the hour when he will return. Um, but Jesus wants us to think that his return could happen at any time. And this is really healthy. And it's true, though, that since the time of the ascension of Christ until the end, this is the last period of history that we are living in. So we are children of the last days. We are living, so to speak, at the end times. And Jesus wants us to consider, as I said, that it could happen soon, because if we thought that it was like thousands of years off, it might take away from our hope. And if we thought it was like next month or next year, we might do something rash, like quit our job or, or something like that. And so um, we should think that it's always close and we should prepare for it. So what are the signs that it's uh, nearing the time of the return of Christ? Well, the scripture gives several indications. Jesus says that there will be wars and catastrophes. Nation will rise against nation. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes. And you don't need me to tell you this. That's, a, that's going on today. A lot of those things are happening in our midst. But they happened 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago as well. So not a very clear sign. The second thing that Jesus said is that the gospel will be proclaimed to the ends of the earth. We heard in our gospel reading today, Jesus sent the apostles out, go and preach the gospel to all, all creatures. And that, we believe maybe, has already happened, right? With our interconnected world, there's no place on earth that's really separated from another place. And so the opportunity to hear the gospel, perhaps, has been offered to every single person. And then, St. Paul tells us that uh, there will also be what he calls the rebellion or the apostasy. And that means when people turn away from the gospel, maybe people who are Christian or that live in Christian nations that have heard the gospel turn away from it. And this is certainly happening. It's been happening for hundreds of years, but it's definitely happening in our midst right now. You know, churches are emptying out. Uh, some are closing. The Christian faith is evaporating in certain parts of the world, and it's picking up steam. But this isn't necessarily an indication that we are at the, <clears throat> at the lowest point, because it could get worse than this. Um, and there, there could go on for some time, because Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? That's an open question, and that sounds like things aren't going to be super great when he comes back. And so that's part of it, you know, that people voluntarily leave the faith, that there are Christians that are baptized that live as if Jesus did not exist. This is a very disturbing sign that, that you know, that Jesus gives. The last one that St. Paul talks about is the Antichrist. And this is the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, 
the one who is going to exalt himself in the place of God and who will try to seduce people with messianic dreams and hopes. And there have been antichrist type figures in the past. We can think of all the evil people of history and those have been preparation for the one that is to come before the time of Christ. And at that time, the church will pass through its final trial when the faith of many will be shaken and it will be uh, a time of purification and it will be like the final exam for the church. Well, um, sad to say, I don't think we're prepared for the final exam. We might not be ready for that test. And so that's why it's important that we prepare ourselves for that with the grace of God. And after that final trial, then Jesus will return in glory as he left publicly and visibly. And then there will be, the dead will be raised and there will be the final judgment. And that will be the end of history and the creation of the new world. So that's the sequence of events. There's uh, things that some people teach that the Catholic Church does not. One of these is a $5 word called millenarianism, which means that Christ will have a thousand year reign on earth. That's not taught by the church. Another thing is called the rapture, which means that, well, it's a, this idea that Jesus will come at one time and take people and then come back again. And that's also not taught by the church. Those two things are two misunderstandings of scripture te texts. So we got to be careful when we hear things about the final times that we don't, uh, that we take it all very carefully because not everything that some people believe is what the Catholic Church teaches and has taught for 2,000 years. So I'm not saying it's going to happen soon. I'm just saying that we should always be prepared and we should read the signs of the times and know that some of the things that Jesus said are certainly taking place in our midst. And that can help us with our preparedness and to get ready for the coming of Christ. So should we look forward to these things? Absolutely. This is the fulfillment of our hope. This is the triumph of love in history. This will be when every tear will be, tear will be wiped away, when every injustice will be made right, when every justice will be restored, when there will be no more meaninglessness to human events. And everything will, and God will be all in all. Everything will be brought to its proper completion. So we should look forward and hope. We should anticipate this. And we should pray for it. The book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, ends with the prayer, Come, Lord Jesus. And that should be our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring everything to its proper fulfillment so that we might, you know, enjoy the glorious reign that you have for us. So, once again, Hope, preparation, and prayer, that's how we should look forward to the second coming of Christ, which we know will happen because it is God's word and his word does not deceive.